Hey, hey, good morning and welcome to the pig, the pig, <laughs> I was about to say the pig style cup, welcome to the pig daily, uh, episode number 27, uh, it is episode number 27 and today is the 27th of June 2016 and today we're going to be talking about using a game plan to narrow your focus. So specifically what got me thinking about this topic was I was looking back through some of my other topics and I was thinking about I was kind of throwing together an episode about how I learn the game and about how like I uh, I think about it and I've been learning a lot of Terran and Protoss so I've always got these kind of learning processes going on at the moment. I was thinking about like what can I share with you guys because there's been a lot of people asking me hey can you can you make it a video or a couple episodes talking about learning Terran or Protoss and I was thinking about it and I started writing out these notes and I kind of was like this is going to be a great episode and then I kind of realized it was about six different episodes and I was like all right we're going to split this and break it down and I was like what's one really important topic which I can hone in on which I use a lot and I realized just kind of using my game plan to simplify my focus to work on just one or a few work on a few areas at a time and to really aid my improvement is probably one of the biggest things which I use when I'm learning the game myself this is something I use not just with Terran or Protoss, but actually with Zerg as well. And I figured, why not showcase that with a build which I've been playing for a long time with Zerg, with my strongest race. Uh, and let's talk a lot about how I kind of create a game plan and then adjust it in order to focus on those different areas and really aid improvement. Um, so let's go in and do that just very quickly as well. I just wanted to show this because uh, we've actually got Vivid in stream chat who won the Pigsty Cup and uh, we're going we're gonna to show off his trophy. For any of you guys who didn't see, this is the sickest trophy which uh, my manager was nice enough to buy for the Pigsty Cup champion. Check it out. That is the sickest, sickest thing ever. So I'm very envious of you, Vivid. That is the sickest trophy, man. Just wanted to show that off there a little bit. Um, hopefully you guys have sorted all that out. Um, so he should be posting that to you right now. All right, guys. So we're going to dive on uh, and kind of into game. We're going to get a replay started. And we're going to have a talk about this kind of whole concept. So here we go. Whoa. All right. <clears throat> so I don't really care too much about the build order today. I want to talk about the concept, the idea of narrowing the focus. But we might as well start by talking about the idea of having a good game plan. We said... You know, you want to have a game plan, you want to adjust that game plan. You could kind of call this having a build order, adjusting your build. It's kind of the same thing, build, game plan, it's the same crossing topic, it's the same same concept. It's the idea of having a general plan and it doesn't need to be memorized down to exact supplies. A lot of people have this idea of a build order being something where you just kind of blindly do the exact same thing every single game, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. A uh, build order or a game plan can also just be a general flow. It can be, I usually go for this, then I go for that. I get my Ling upgrades and then I go for Lair or something like that. These are all parts of a game plan. They're parts of actually developing your play in that way. So what we're going to be talking about is, first of all, why? Why do we want to have a game plan? Uh, I think it's the first step in developing a really good build in terms of heading to that high level refined play. And... Most importantly, it's just something which allows us to develop habits and improve our play. And that's what we're really focusing on today. We're focusing on trying to get the absolute most out of that aspect of having a game plan. How can you improve the most? How can you develop good habits? How can you learn to improve your play? So what we're going to be talking about here is a build where we go for the very typical ZVT style right now, which is just going up for Roach, Ravager, Lings and Festers into Fast Ultras. This is something you'd be seeing at the high level all the time now. So let's give you guys a quick overview of the build. And then we're going to go back and we're going to actually look at the learning stages of this build. We're going to look at a few other replays where I execute it completely differently to build the fundamental skills required to actually play the build properly. So early on, we start off with a three queen opening, just going to be droning up our two bases. We've pulled off gas after Ling speed. We go and take our third base, usually between 36 and 40 supply. This one's a little bit late, but distracted by that Reaper. Like I said, doesn't matter too much what the specifics are. Um, you know, I actually started this out as a, a beginner basics episode, but this does apply to absolutely every skill level, which is why I kind of ended up shifting this just to be a more regular episode. 
and you're gonna drop a roach more at about three minutes 40. Then you're gonna drop double gas at four minutes. You're just gonna keep on droning up. We've poked up the ramp with our Zerglings, which is why we didn't need to sacrifice an Overlord. And we're going to get about seven roaches out, somewhere between four and seven roaches, depending on what the situation is. In this case, we're building a few more defensive units than we might normally, because we've spotted that very fast reacted starport. So we know it's going to be a fast double medevac drop. So we're just going to make sure we have a few more units than normal. But generally speaking, you then go for lair, you start your evo chamber, or sometimes you just go double evo, slightly delayed from this at the same time, depending on how you prefer to play it. And you just try and defend these drops. You keep on droning behind that, using your small squad of Roachling to defend. You've got a few queens for mobility. You drop a few spores as well to stop those medevacs just flying between your bases. Now, after you defend here for a little while, <clears throat> and you've just been droning during this off this first group of roaches, you will need to add more roaches. We see more units in the production tab. Because if your opponent just keeps on building marines, loads up more medevacs, they can join the party very quickly. So we're adding a few more roaches now, making sure we can split up to cover the different angles. We've got the second evo chamber starting to upgrade, and the moment that layer finishes, we're going to go for an infestation pit. Down here at the natural, we should be going for roach speed, that's something we forget for a really long time in this specific replay. And you can see it's all just about defend, 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 and we're going to tech towards ultras as fast as we can. We're putting down another spore crawler in the main. We should be establishing a fourth. This is the big mistake we're making this game. Just a little bit sloppy on my part. Being a bit distracted by the drops should have a fourth base and those gases started by now. And we see the infestation pit finishes immediately going for hive. And you can either go, you can either skip uh, pathogen glands and just build three or four infestors, or you can just get the pathogen glands and go up to three and four three or four infestors depending on your preference um, so we see here we've got roaches spread out across our three bases still a little bit sloppy though letting our roaches get pulled out of position by these marines so we're going to lose the fourth base but you guys can really see this general build up right it's like super typical zvt right now rush towards hive tech defend 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 getting the infestors out now now we are getting plus two range you'd normally get melee there because by the stage this upgrade kicks in we're going to be building ultralisks anyway so those upgrades are the most important marines continuing to be annoying and you're just going to take the gases on the fourth base as well as transition workers out of your main notice we've only got eight workers in the main now they're going to move down here to the 4th, and we're going to go immediately for the Ultra Cavern, melee carapace upgrades, and play it out from there. So let's, let's fast forward from here, we can zoom on out, and we can just kind of have a panoramic view of how the rest of this game goes. Well, we might as well slow down for the fight, so everyone likes watching a good fight. Notice how the Roach Ravager and Festerling is trying to buy time. They weren't going into the tank line and just engaging far off creep. They were saying, let's create space because what we're waiting for is chitinous plating and ultras to pop out. So we've just got to create space. We lost all that creep spread earlier. So it's very important to make sure he can't push forward. Now our opponent's being a little bit slow, but notice here how we just microed our infestors and our ravages forward. And we're just trying to pick away at the units, making it so he can't just pick up his army and then drop the tanks here. Every little bit he moves forward, he's going to have to micro it, he's going to have to dodge fungals, dodge corrosive biles, and if he's ever not watching, we'll take some free pickups. So back to the, uh, the old control Z zoomed out, and we see, okay, now we've got ultras out with chitinous plating, and we just kind of roll over Terran through a series of Big Ultra Infestor Ravager attacks. Not much finesse at this point. You guys have seen it before. Terran, play Terran players have cried about it. Zerg players have reveled. There it is. And we come in for the kill. This is a very typical game plan. 
However, the really important part of the game, we'll just mute for a moment there while we watch the end of this game, was defending up to the hive. It was slowing down that attack to get here. Now this game, we weren't under that much pressure. We didn't have to show absolutely crazy finesse. If you want to see the best players in the world doing it, I mean, you can go and watch Nurtio vs. Polt, Eliza vs. Polt from Tours. You can watch recent games um, from, uh, from Home Story Cup. There's a lot of VODs out there of players better than me going through these same situations. What's important here is getting, getting an idea of there we go. There's this popular game plan used at the pro level. It's something which has shown great success, maybe not as much recently since Terran players are getting very good at disrupting it and it's just not really working in career at all right now. But you always see these, these builds and you could also apply the same concepts with a build you've created yourself. It doesn't necessarily need to be something that you've copied off the pro level. The idea though, is usually when you're kind of visualizing a build or a game plan, you have like the ideal build, you have the end goal. And that's what we were looking at in this game. We were looking at this idea of, let's look at what it looks like in the end. Like you've got the whole stage is mapped out. The early game defense with the road traveler, you've got the infestors in the mid game, and then you've got the ultras in the late game. You've got this whole long-term game plan. Now, what a lot of players do is they make the mistake of just kind of going let's just try and practice from there. Let's just, let's just do it. And it's like, yeah, if you're completely new to this style, you're not used to the opening build order. You're not used to microing, defending the, the drops with the roaches and ravages. You're not used to using the infestors to slow down the attack. There's so many different stages and the problem players often have is they struggle to improve. Now, this is the key point which we're gonna be talking about all today. So, <clears throat> What we're really focusing on is this idea of StarCraft is a vastly complicated game. I'm just getting the other replay replay open. Um, so StarCraft is a vastly complex game. And what we need to do is we need to simplify it in order to help us learn. We need to try and encounter the same situations. So on the first level, we've got the fact that, okay, we've got a game plan. Therefore, by playing the one sort of game plan a lot of times we're starting to get consistency. How does that give us consistency? It's because you're encountering the same situations. Now, a lot of people say this takes the fun out of the game, just copying a build order. But remember, this isn't just memorizing an exact build order. It could just be a game flow. And most importantly, even if you are just doing a very detailed memorized build order, you're playing a game of StarCraft. Your opponent's entire goal is to throw crazy shit at you, is to throw you off your game. So there's, so, there's always so much input from your opponent. Even if you do the exact same thing every Every game every game will be different and you will always have a huge wide range of responses that you need to apply to each situation so I really kind of think that it's a very thoroughly debunked argument that the game becomes boring if you just use uh, one build in a matchup for instance because that build if you're playing it properly should have so many different responses to so many different situations and that's where you start to come into the detail and the complexity of Starcraft so what we're going to be talking about is you've got a game plan that helps give you consistency because you encounter the same situation a lot. But I just then talked about how it can be too vast. It can be too complicated. There's too many stages of the game. So what we're focusing on today is the idea of when you pick up a build, the first thing you should do is focus on just one part of that build. And the easiest way to do that is to limit your focus or narrow your focus, which is the entire topic of today. So let's hop into a game and let's talk about how I learnt to play that style we saw in that first replay. Now in this next game, this is gonna show what you should pretty much always do, especially with a macro focus build in terms of the early focus in learning the build. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to say to ourselves, okay, do the exact same opening, same build order, but that's our focus. Really getting used to our early game macro, making sure we don't screw up there. Cause that's always such a big hurdle. Just getting used to a new build order, you're always much worse at executing the early game. So what we've kind of told ourselves here is, let's go into this game and we're just gonna all in. You might think, well, this is not an all in build order. Why, why would you do that? It's so that we can simplify the focus. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say the most important part of the early game macro is saturating three bases and defending drops, right? If we can do that well, then we should be able to do the next stages of the macro quite well. But I know that I'm going to fuck this up my first time. I know I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes early on. So instead, what we want to be looking at is how can I simplify it? Okay, saturate three bases. So complete the macro the same way I would in a macro game and then just build Roach Ravager and A move. 
And that's all we want to be focusing on is just build Roach Ravager and then A move. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. But the early game is exactly the same as a macro game. We see here we've got to deal with the Reaper. The Reaper's being a pain in the ass. This guy's actually a massive pain in the ass. Look that even kills a drone, wastes some mining time. This is this is some pretty big blunders. You're gonna make mistakes dealing with pressure the first time doing a build. So this really helps you iron out these kinks. Remember as well, there's so many different reactions we mentioned. By focusing just on the early stages of the build, it allows you to replay that early game over and over again. All that matters is does our attack work or does it not work? And if it doesn't work, no worries. You get to repeat the scenario, which is going to give you that concentrated practice against what your opponent is throwing your way. So <clears throat> if your opponent's throwing a particular build at you, you get to practice your response against that in isolation. You don't need to go and kind of focus on that completely separately. So in this instance, we're just kind of doing our build order. It looks completely standard. We've got the Roach Warren down. We've got the double gas at the natural going down after that at four minutes. We're going to be getting the lair, the Evo chamber. We'll be getting a second Evo chamber soon. The drop will be coming in. We see once again, we've got our Roaches and Zerglings to deal with it. Spore Crawler at each base. Looks exactly the same as the other game. Obviously, I've done this many, many times, this build order. But when you're first starting out, your macro won't look anywhere near the same as when you're executing it a few weeks after you're good at a build. A few weeks later, you'll be so much more refined in your early game, so much more efficient. But when you first start out, you'll be making blunders in these early stages. So we're just gonna kind of defend, 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 macro up. And then look at it, look at our unit tab. Oh, we're at 68 workers. That's three bases fully saturated. Okay, he's getting a drop in the main. He's being a bit of a sneaky guy. But all right, this is the challenge. Get to three bases and defend the drops. Right now, not doing the greatest job. So we can already see, all right, well, you know what? We talked about it in that previous replay. After a certain time of those drops being in, the first two drops, you need to add more units. You just can't just keep droning because you know they could meet more drops across the map. We didn't do that. We didn't have those extra units kind of preemptively built and split up in our bases like in that other more advanced replay. And as a result, we took damage to it. So we're already learning small reactions, ways we can adjust our unit positioning in order to be better and stronger against what we're facing. Terran! Never wants to leave your base, man. Never wants to leave. We see here we're still at three bases fully saturated. They're all fully mining. We're not even focusing on building a fourth because we're under a lot of pressure. And like I said, all we're going to do is mass road ravager. Who cares? A fourth doesn't really mean anything. Well, maybe we want to take that fourth just to practice the build the way we normally would. But all we're doing now is massing roaches and ravages, and we're just going to aim move across that map like a happy person. He's coming in again with more drops, but we've split up our units quite well. We do lose the fourth base, but he's losing a lot of units to do this. And now we are almost maxed out, so we can dive on in. Lazy drones, get back to mining. And here we go. Now, this is nowhere near the best Roach Ravager timing. If I wanted to hit a, a hard Roach Ravager timing, I would cut some workers on one of these bases. I'd only be at like 55 drones. Well, I guess I've lost enough drones to only be at 57. But, you know, we'd try and be more efficient in how we execute this. As it is, though, this has given us the perfect macro practice. And, in fact, it's actually going to allow us to overwhelm our opponent. We're just hitting with so much road Ravager. He's been so focused on denying that fourth. If we were going for a longer game plan, oh... We would have actually, you know, cared a lot more about losing that fourth base, about struggling to establish that. As it is with the Mass Road Ravager, only two siege tanks. We're like, oh cool, we're just going to win this game. Hey, that works out. Nothing like SCVs versus Ravagers to make a Zerg player happy. Oh yeah. GG's. Okay, so we just saw there, 
the idea of simplifying the game plan. And I really want to rub this kind of idea home. No matter what style you're doing, it's let's cut down the build to just part of the build. Let's just commit to an all in at that point. Or, you know, just focus on just trying to kill your opponent after you've hit a certain goal. So you can then open the replay. You can be like, I messed this up in the early game. I messed this up. Keep your focus on those small details. Don't be going to a half hour long slugfest your first time playing the build. Because you're going to get out of the build and your brain's going to be like, man, if only I microed my broodlords better at 23 minutes into the game, I might have been able to beat the ghosts or something. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that kind of helps. You know what helps more? Actually just refining your opening build order, refining your defense when the first two drops come in. Because you're going to encounter those two drops, two out of three games or one out of three games, every single game. How often do you get to the 23 minute mark where you're microing broodlords? Not that often. And this actually is something which I was thinking about a lot because I started playing Binding of Isaac this weekend. So for anyone who's played, you would know it's a randomly generated kind of just run around spamming things, two-dimensional game, a lot of fun. And I was getting frustrated because I'm so used to improving with StarCraft. And then I'm playing this game where I'm like, every situation is different, at least when you're starting out. Eventually, as you play more and more, you start to encounter the same situations and learn, but it's really slowed down because it's so fast and it's, it's so quick. And I'd be like, oh, hop into a room and there's this situation where you don't know how to deal with it or you don't know how the enemy monsters work. You pick up items, you don't know how they work and you're just kind of like, oh, okay, I don't know what's going on. That's all right. I'll just restart. And, you know, you, know, you restart because you die and everything's completely different. And it absolutely destroys your ability to learn and to break down the game mechanics and figure out how to, how to win quickly. And that's what made me really kind of think about this idea of I'm like, yeah, I actually, in every game I play now, because I've been playing so much StarCraft, I always want to find the quickest way to win. I always find the best way to break down the game. Um, you know, even playing Overwatch, I try to keep it really casual and focus on playing it with friends from, you know, my old, old real life non-gaming friends where we're all kind of running around shooting our guns in the air and, and that sort of thing. And even then I start getting, getting annoyed if I'm not actually figuring out the exact stats of how much certain damage does, how much certain damage is at certain range. And that's kind of what this idea of is in StarCraft. Because StarCraft, you're always going to encounter these problems. The issue is it's a 1v1 game. It's a lot more competitive. So it's harder to ignore the competitive aspect and just be like, doop de doop I'm just shooting things. I'm having fun. And StarCraft is just so much more satisfying when you're improving. So... Let's hop into the final game and let's talk about the next step with this specific build order in terms of how we want it to improve. Now, this is going to be the last replay, guys, so please do shout out your questions in chat. Use the adx5 underscore pig tag. I'm going to talk about those uh, all at the end of the show, so please shout those out. So let's dive into game. Whoops, wrong overlay. Let's dive into game here. So continuing with this Roach Ravager build. So we showed the entire game plan at the start, the idea of getting up to ultras, getting up to infestors. But then we showed the first tier of learning it, where I said, look, I'm just going to break it down, saturate three bases, focus on the early game defense and macro, and then I'm just going to do a big A move. Yeah, I'll drop a few corrosive vials, but really it is just a big A move. And even at really high levels, that sort of play, you can still win games with it. It's not like you're just going to lose, but it really helps you improve so much quicker. Now, <clears throat> that's the first step of breaking the game down to a simple step. What's the next step? The next big step we haven't really practiced is buying time in that mid game, using the fungals and the corrosive biles combined in order to get value against the Terran army in the mid game and in order to slow down those tank marine marauder medevac pushes. So those are the really important parts of making this style work. So I've got to say to myself, well, when I'm first starting out, how the hell am I gonna manage to hang on here? How am I going to do this? Well, I've got to have good infester control, good corrosive bio control. I've seen a lot of players try to do this style and they've got no idea how to use those spells in tandem just because they haven't practiced it. It's not like they don't understand the theory of you drop a fungal, you drop a corrosive bio. Everyone understands that, but it's just the matter that they don't have practice at it. And it's something you've got to drop very quickly. You've got to be very precise with. Starcraft's a very fast paced game. And the thing is, infestors quite a bit down the tech tree not something you always get a chance to get to. So by making sure we have a solid defensive early game with that first practice, I've said, well, I should always be able to make it towards infestors a lot easier now because, ooh, micro dance. Um, I should always be able to make it towards infestors, right? Because I've managed to, to change up the way we actually address the situation where we're making sure our macro is way more on point now. And it's like, okay, that's cool. 
die, die. So we're making sure the macro is more on point. Now, our next step, we're gonna say, you know what, I still don't wanna to rush towards Hive. I'm just gonna play Roach, Ravager, and Fester. So let's fast forward through this early game. We've seen it a few times already. It's not the most exciting, especially because he's doing a 2-1-1 build, two barracks, one factory, one starport. Exact same build he's doing every game. Um, yeah, so basically in this game, we're just gonna play Roach, Ravager, and Fester. And we're actually gonna impose a restriction on, upon ourselves of only make Roaches, Ravagers, and Infestors. We're not allowed to build any other units. And that's how we're going to learn to use these units well. We're not necessarily going to be using them in the correct manner because we're going to be investing so much in Infestors and Ravagers and never going to Hive Tech. So, well, maybe the way we're using the composition doesn't really make sense. But does that really matter if we use it in a way that makes sense or not? I am not so sure. I think what's more important is focusing on the micro. That's what we talked about. We talked about this idea of Let's just focus on the micro. Let's focus on getting used to using these units. All the skirmishes with Roach Ravager going on. Uh, I definitely got some, some powerful leeway re reasonably early in these games. But let's go up to that Infestor stage and here we are. Alright, so we're getting towards the Infestor stage of the game. Now this is something I really want to focus on. Let's talk about some of the best players in StarCraft history. Let's talk about Stefano. An absolute god in his day, a guy who revolutionized the game. Why are we talking about him right now? We're talking about him because he was a creature of habit, and he was a player who in the early days did probably some of the best, most organized and serious focus practice out of any pro gamer. And that goes a lot against Stefano's image, doesn't it? He's the cool guy who's just partying and chilling, and I'm, I'm sure he was, definitely. I don't know Stefano too well, but, you know, I'm sure he did go out and party and have fun, and maybe in the later days didn't practice as much. But it is without a doubt that in the early days, Stefano was the guy who sat there for one week in the early stages of Wings of Liberty, just injecting, just practicing his inject. Literally cared about nothing else in his games about having perfect injects. All he did was mass roaches. I'm pretty sure I heard this story. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on it. But I think that's actually where he started out inventing his mass roach style, was he was just working on his lava injects. And he kind of was like, well, I'm just going to build a basic unit that doesn't take a lot of attention. I'm just going to have a very basic game plan because my focus is on injecting. And after a week of just getting his injects, they were perfect. He could do them without even thinking. If I remember correctly, Stefano had one of the least mechanically efficient inject methods. He would click on the minimap and zoom around and just select queens and inject. Horribly slow method when you look at the mechanics of it. But he practiced it so much that his mouse accuracy became godlike or it was already godlike. I don't know. The guy's like a surgeon with his mouse. And he basically just got incredibly good at it so he could do it without thinking. He could do everything else in the game and keep his injects up. Something every Zerg player struggled for the first two years, including in Korea. Like the number of times you'd see Leenok with like just so much energy on his queens. Um, it, was, it was pretty nasty. So Stefano was one of the first players who did that. Who's another player in more recent times who also focuses on their practice like this? Snoot. Snoot's a player who is... Hell, he's a creature of habit. We saw him practice swarm host games for years until he was an absolute god of it. No one could rival Snoot's ability to use swarm hosts. Likewise, I feel like he's kind of done the same thing with Ravages. Here in Legacy of the Void, we have seen him using Ravages in every matchup so often, and he's so good with his Biles. We saw back at Katowice him turn around a game versus Hydra on Ruins of Seras. A few Zerg players might actually remember that game, where it looked like he was behind the whole time, but he just kept winning these Ravager Ling engagements because he kept landing perfect Biles. Likewise in Zerg vs Terran, the first three or four months of the game, all Snoot ever did was play Mass Roach Ravager and Fester. As a result, he's a bloody god at hitting his fungals and biles. And it's because he's just focused on that limited area of the game. And for him, he actually, well, said, this is a good game plan. I'm winning 90% of my games on ladder with it. But you can apply these same sort of rules in order to limit your focus. And this isn't just for Zerg players. As I said, today's topic is very general. I'm just using this, this particular style as an example. So here in this game, we're going to say, let's just try and use Road Traveller and Fester and just keep making Road Traveller and Fester. No matter how tempting it is to say, now's a good time to go Broodlords, I say, nah, let's just make Road Traveller and Fester. And the thing is, a lot of players think of this as like, well, why would you handicap yourself? Thing is, you're not handicapping yourself. You're actually developing your skills for the long term. Not only that, but you're actually going to win a shitload of games. Like, putting these restrictions on yourself, a lot of people think, how will I possibly win doing that? And what they realize is because their focus is around a smaller area of the game, 
they play better because they have to play towards that specific restriction. Rather than getting lost in the broad complexity of StarCraft, they focus on one particular strength of their army, one particular strength of their style. And that's what actually allows them to play so well, because they develop their skills, they use their army uh, in terms of how its strengths operate, rather than kind of messing around and, uh, and falling apart a little bit because they don't, have that, um, they don't have that focus on using the strengths of their force. So let's take a look at this, just Roach, Ravager, and Festa, maybe we'll get a Hive, but only for 3-3 three, three upgrades, not for anything else. And look at this, just mass Roach, Ravager, and Festa, and I particularly said, well, Roach, Ravager, and Festa is still not that great if you're just headbutting up a ramp, but keep in mind to the Terran, this looks like the identical style. It looks like someone teching towards Hive, he knows he's got to attack before Hive, that's the standard Terran way to play against it. Technically, if he just turtled and went range Liberators and Ghosts, our choice of composition would suck. So if our opponent is a 1 in a 1000 Terran, well, we're not really going to find the engagements if he never leaves his base, unless our big first attack just happens to manage to overwhelm him. It's going to be tr pretty tough. But overall, it's a decent game plan. And we see here, we can practice coming in. Oh, look at this. Okay, so coming in with a big spread against tanks is very important. Fungal plus Bile combos going down, spread across the lines. Not the best fun uh, Corrosive Bile concentration on the tanks. But we see this gives us the ability to practice this. And obviously the game looks almost over at this point. And if we went to Ultras, oh, that Corrosive Bile, that was some, some pure skill right there. <laughs> Killing two of my own Ravages. Um, the game would definitely be over if we just went to like Ultras and Broodlords, right? But we're not that focused on winning. So you're putting that on the standstill and you're saying, let's... We've got this kind of intricate game plan of heading towards Hive Tech, but this is one of our learning steps. And we're just going to keep making Roaches and Ravagers, keep making Infestors. We're going to hunt for these engagements. And I'm going to say, well, with Ravagers and Infestors and Roaches, like we said, their strength is not headbutting up a ramp into Siege Tanks. That's where they suddenly look appallingly bad. Ravagers, not that buff. Only 120 hit points. Um, obviously, the 145 of the Roaches, exact same armor. Um, slightly slower than a speed roach ravages as well 3.85 movement speed to 4.2 so we're saying well let's just zone out bases let's absorb attacks when he pushes out with flanks and let's set up kind of big flanks outside his base big arcs and try to pick off units with corrosive bile pick off units with fungal we see here coming forward to just corrosive bile down the command center but we're not just yoloing well we might want to soon but not just yet just going to deal with these drops. And whenever he moves out, finding the bile, finding the corrosive bile. And this is the exact... Let, let's go back and look at that one more time. Because this is the exact same situation that we're replicating. As remember how I was saying, if you're back here, they're pushing towards your fourth. You've got to buy time. Because once the tanks get in range of the hatchery, you kind of have to just engage or sacrifice the base. But here, we're creating the same situation. He needs to take a fourth. So we're sitting just outside of range. And whenever he moves forward, we're looking for those fungal moments. We're looking for those corrosive biles. And we say, oh, he makes a slip up, pounce on top of it, throw down the fungal bile. Goodbye, Metavax. Goodbye, Siege Tanks. It's actually so much fun to play this style as well. It's actually really hilarious. Building more Roaches, Ravages, and Infestors, and we're going to come in just with another big fight in the near future. Double drop comes to the main, sees it's lined with spores and spines, says nope, gets the hell out of there. Very important with any Roach, Ravager, Infestor style versus Terran, um, even if you're going Hive Tech, you've got to have, have some spores up, trying to zone out some of the edges here and there. Just try and punish those drops a little bit, otherwise the Terran can really get that mobility going. Oh, the fungal bile. Oh my. Oh. Oh my. And we really get target practice. So turning your games into target practice, it also makes it a lot of fun um, just using certain abilities and just saying, yeah, we're just going to just keep on spamming this same unit over and over. And it's a very viable strategy. Um, as we can see, even making it work here at a pretty high level of play. GG. 
Um, big thanks to Sparrow, by the way, for playing these games with me. This was Sparrow I was playing against. He was he was just practicing. It's not like he was he was trying super hard or anything. Um, and he was saying he was trying out a bit of a new build order with it, and he wasn't quite quite there yet. He was hitting a little bit late with his timings. But a big thanks to Sparrow for actually playing those games with me. I really needed someone to kind of sit down and just grind out me playing these different stages of learning the build. And that worked out really well. So let's look at the questions and let's see if there's anything good there to talk about to round this out. So I'm going to scroll right up in the chat and Gomi says, will the vote of this be up in eight hours? Uh, you're probably already asleep. You said, I got to sleep. Uh, yes. Uh, it's normally up within about eight to 12 hours at the absolute most. Sometimes the video takes a really long time to process on YouTube. All right, so we've got a few questions about nude pics. The StarCraft community has really gone to shit, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, Hugh the Titan says, can you discuss how you might apply these concepts to games like Isaac, i.e. to get the focus practice in highly variable games? Well, um, definitely trying to, trying to just think of different strategies and trying to take the game slowly. So one thing in, in Binding of Isaac, which I did was, I mean, I, I was like, well, the items just keep coming. And, you know, you get to use it once and then you, it isn't even always apparent exactly what it does. So I feel like that's the sort of game. If you don't want to just be running around lost, you absolutely have to just Google. You have to just go through the wiki each time you pick up an item and look it up. Um, in terms of trying to simplify the game plan, those games are already relatively simple. There's not that many choices you have. But you can try to focus around using certain things. So, I mean, this is this is meant to be a StarCraft show, but um, okay, like for instance, okay, so the game, right? You can focus on saying um, against a certain boss that I keep losing to. I'm gonna try to focus when he's doing. Uh, whenever I see a certain graphic that foretells an attack, I'm gonna focus on dodging the attack and I'm gonna pause my shooting. A lot of people get so focused on just trying to spam out their attack that they stop. They stop dodging. So I'm going to say to myself, all right, I'm going to focus on trying to trying to make sure whenever I see an attack, just focus on dodging, focus on movement. So I can kind of split up my focus rather than focus on attacking and defense at the same time. I'll kind of partition. Okay, focus on attack when this is happening, when there's nothing threatening. Whenever there's anything threatening, just focus on defense. Even though it's going to drag out the boss fight, it's going to improve my mechanical skill and it's going to allow me to get better at actually figuring out patterns for where I should be defending and where I should be dodging to so that I can start to do it subconsciously. Um, Arkham Knight says, what can a Terran do to make Zerg late game micro easier? Um, what? Is this saying Terran is your main race and then you've swapped to Zerg? Please clarify. I assume you're saying that Zerg late game micro isn't that hard. Um, if you're talking about using ravages and corrosive bars, I don't know. I feel like Terran micro is so much harder. If you're talking about using like spell casters like bile and fungal, um, go check out my daily on how to get better micro. There was a good section in, I believe, the second half of that about using spell casters. It was about using them on different control groups, getting a feel for the range of spell casters and trying to move them around kind of in tandem. And once you get the feel for that, um, it'll become much, much cleaner. <laughs> Too much beer with all the legit questions today. He says, I'm losing 66% of my games. Should I install LOL? Yes, definitely. Definitely install LOL. Of course, Too Much Beer is our resident resident, uh, resident troll over here. And, uh, and we do love him. And all right. All right, there's literally no questions to do with the topic. <laughs> uh, so let's just summarize and finish up the show then. There's, there's a bunch of questions about other things we can talk about afterwards. But um, so yeah, basically to summarize, if you want to learn a build, one of the best things you can do is use a game plan. So get the idea of a build, get the idea of let's have a game plan. Let's have an order in which we do things. It's getting really hot. This jacket's actually really warm. So I'm going to, I'm going to unzip this while I talk. Don't get too excited. Crazy Twitch people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something where try to, um, let's, let's throw that off. I've got my old SC2C shirt on, repping the old school community. Um, all right. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, all right, we want to be practicing uh, a build. You've got this broad game plan. You always want to use a game plan. We talked about at the start. Why, why do you want to build? Why do you want a game plan? You want consistency in your play. Definitely. You can just hop on and just play by feel and do random stuff sometimes. But if you're playing a lot of Starcraft, that's going to get really boring, really fast. Um, maybe not really fast, but at a point 
you'll be like, you know what, I kind of want to improve. And you will hit a point as a player where you say, you know what, let's try and refine our play a bit more. And I want people to stop seeing build orders as restrictive. I definitely think you don't need to go out and copy someone else's build order, but even just refining your own build order, developing your own set of kind of structured order that you kind of tech forwards in, way that you build up your base in the early game. And people will naturally do this. I'm just talking about maybe being a little bit more organized in this. If, I mean, you're always going to develop habits, right? And that's what we're talking about. It's just developing habits, developing a mental checklist, as Day 9 would call it. So we're talking about kind of just the benefits of that. And in terms of once you get to the point where you say, okay, I want to copy what the pro is doing, or I want to do this long-term game plan where I get to that high tech units, you kind of want to break it down. That's really what we're talking about today. It's about saying, let's break the game plan into pieces. Let's focus just on the early game macro up to a certain point and then just go all in. Do that for 10, 15 games, just grind it out. And you'll find there's a lot of diversity in terms of scouting and learning how to react. Maybe you could even do that for 30 games, 40 games. And you'd actually find you encounter so many different scenarios. It doesn't get boring. Then once you've done that, you say, okay, let's focus on the mid game. Let's focus on using this, this kind of tier two army. In this case, it was the infestors and the ravages, land the fungals, land the bars, get used to the micro, get used to the positioning. And even though you might lose games because you're not doing the necessary transition afterwards, that's fine. If you execute well, you can usually still win at these stages. So each loss forces you to learn. It forces you to assess what can I do better at this stage of the game. So by the time you finally get to the stage where you say, I feel confident going to Hive Tech, I feel confident going to the end of my game plan. That's when everything comes together as a StarCraft player. You feel like a Gosu. You put your thumbs in the air. You high five the mirror image of yourself and you feel like an awesome human because you've just you've just ranked up you've just gotten a lot better at starcraft and suddenly everything is coming together so that's pretty much it um i do want to say a big thanks to everyone who uh has been in chat kind of shouting some stuff and uh <laughs> one last question this one's super legit from muff man he says what is the most strategic timing that a zerg player can slash dance their roaches in the terran's face I would say that's going to be after you drop them in a mineral line, like literally drop four roaches as early as you possibly can dance them, kill one SCV, preferably that's like building a structure or, or is on a gas just to be more annoying and then pick the roaches up and just leave the base. Like your opponent's mind will just explode. Don't even wait for units to respond. Just, just kill a single SCV, dance the roaches and leave. All right, guys, that's all for now. I do want to say a big thanks for hanging out. Um, I'm pretty happy with today's length of the episode. So let's, Cut it off there. Uh, IC Far. Today is the last day for submissions for IC Far, guys. So, the submission for this week. If you are going to play the game, play it today and send the replay immediately to eonblue95 at gmail.com. If you're on YouTube, the email is in the description to the video below. If you're in Twitch chat, the link is in Twitch chat. The challenge is with each attack, you must drop at least half of your army. So, at least half of your attacking force must be dropped you cannot attack with your whole army on the front you cannot attack with two-thirds of your army on the front you can only ever attack with half of your army on the front if another half of your army is dropping at the exact same time so a bit of a tough challenge for protoss players uh yeah so that's going to finish it up thanks for hanging out guys tomorrow we're going to do a beginner basics episode we kind of swapped today and yesterday's ep uh today and tomorrow's episode so that one should be good for you newer players uh thanks for hanging out guys don't forget to hug a watermelon lick a walrus and of course punch a cactus to the moon see you guys later Of course, we are going to finish the stream. We are going to continue. We've got this like thief in the background. This black hood on and shit. Just fucking ste oh, stealing shit. stuff from my house. <laughs> I admire your commitment to theatrics. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's a lot like Fun Day Monday.